I got my radio back going. Well, actually, I got it back from my grandfather. Uh, my, when my grandmother was alive, I uh, she listened to the radio, but he doesn't. So and it was a gift from me. So he gave it back to me in a time of need when all my radios died around me. <laughs> and you cannot buy a radio anymore in any store. It has to be online. So it was a blessing. An old school radio, you know, with a couple speakers. See it over there. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy about that. I love music. Anyway, I'm watching USC Penn State. USC's up seven. On number four Penn State right now. A lot of duds so far in college in the noon games. Except for Alabama squeaking by South Carolina. Um, a lot of blowouts so far. The Tigers lost, so they are out. They lost to the Guardians. They move on to the ALCS. The Tigers do not. So it is now time. A good time to talk about Michigan basketball, I think. Uh, 2024 roster and coaches and a preview. I'm going to go through the schedule as well, give you a winner and a loser for all of the games. Michigan lists one center, four forwards, really one of them is a center slash forward, and 11 guards on this team. Total difference, total rehaul from what Juwan Howard was doing. Dusty May was 126 and 69 at FAU. Dusty May is the new Michigan head coach replacing Juwan Howard. That included a 35 and 4 record and a final four run in 22 uh, 23 season. And he was 25 and 9 in the 23 24 season, in which they were back in the NCAA tournament where they lost to Northwestern, of all people, in overtime in the first round. But Dusty is much more like Coach John Beeline used to be than Howard could ever dream of. Not that I wasn't behind Juwan Howard in the beginning for Michigan basketball. When he came here, first time head coach, Fab Five member, it was great, uh, a lead eight per, uh, appearance in the first year, but it became clear that his philosophy wasn't gonna work here at the University of Michigan as head coach, that is. So enter Dusty May, much more like John Beeline. 3 and D. 3 and D are staples that win in college basketball. And specialty players or role players are essential. And an emphasis on no turnovers is welcome as well for this team. Shot selection is key, of course, as well. And that's why I love all the players that... Uh, Dusty May brought in. Should we get to the players or the coaching staff first? Let's dive right into the players, shall we? Center, Vlad Golden is a graduate transfer from FAU. Uh, he was with Dusty May there. 7'1", 250 pounds is a true center. 67%. 0% from three. He doesn't shoot them. He plays 25 minutes points per game, or 25 minutes per game. He gets 6.9 rebounds, 1.6 blocks, and 15.7 points in 25 minutes per game. As a big guy, a big seven footer. Then Danny Wolf, and it's interesting because I heard uh, Dusty May talking about playing these two together. That's the beautiful thing about this roster he has assembled is they are all universal. They are all um, transferable. You can play any one of these. You could put any starting five on this roster, and I think they do pretty darn good, any of them, including the freshmen. You can go small, you can go big. The, the uh, adaptability is amazing for this team. There's a word that is, is escaping my mind right now. But Danny Wolf is a junior transfer from Yale. He is a seven footer as well, 250 pounds, but he is listed more as a forward because he is 47% from the field, 35% from three. 
uh, and 14 points per game. In 31 minutes per game, he got 9.7 rebounds, 2.4 assists, 1.3 blocks, and one steal per game. But he had 2.3 turnovers per game as well, so we got to watch out for that. And then Will shatters back at forward. He returns. Redshirt senior, 6'8", 230 pounds, 58% from the field, 52% from three-point land, only 6.8 points per game, but he was misused last year. And we all know it. He's much better than that. And then forward Sam Walters, the sophomore transfer from Alabama, 6'10", 200 pounds. He is 39% from three, 43% from the field, 5.4 points per game uh, in 12.3 minutes. So limited time for Sam Walters, but you can see he can produce. And then Harrison Hoberg, a sophomore, no action yet, a 6'7", 220 pounder. Let's move to the guards, shall we? Nambari Burnett returns. He is a graduate now, 6'5", 200 pounds, 40% from the field, 35% from three, 9.6 points per game in 31 minutes per game. But he had 4.1 rebounds, 2.4 assists, and almost one steal per game. So, you know, we all know that he was misused last year as well. So hopefully the new coaching staff will entrust him in, and his ability because I think he is very talented. Always has been. Then he got to Michigan and kind of faltered. But Dusty May will have a plan for this guy, 35% from three. And then Jace Howard is held on by Dusty May, the former coach's son. He returns as a graduate, 6'7", 215 pounds, only 30% from the field, 27% from three. This is either loyalty for the former coach or Dusty believes that he can be a better player than he has been. Guard Reuben Jones is a graduate Transfer from North Texas, 6'5", 190 pounds, 40% from the field, 42% from three, 12 uh, points per game, and 30 minutes per game. He got 3.6 rebounds, 3.7 assists, and 1.5 steals. Ian Burns is a senior, no action yet, but a 6'6", 205 pound guard. Charlie May is a junior transfer from UCF, 6'5", 190 pounds, no action yet. He is the son of head coach Dusty May. And from the press conference, uh, he called Dusty dad once, and Dusty looked at him like, no, he, nope, <laughs> that ain't going to fly. I'm treating you like everybody else, so, you know. Howard had his sons on the, on the roster, and I like to believe he did the same things. But Dusty is keeping that um, extension. Now, Roddy Gale Jr. comes in. A junior transfer from Ohio State. The rivals, 6'5", 205 pounds, 13.5 points per game. 45% from the field, only 28% from three, but he has a better shot than that. Uh, in 31 minutes per game, he got 4.6 rebounds, 3.1 assists, and almost a steal per game, but he had almost 2.4 turnovers per game in them 31 minutes as well. Justin Pippen comes in. Yes, the son of uh, the great bull, Pippen. Freshman, 6'3", Scotty, right? Scotty. 6'3", 180 pounds, 107th nationally in the nation, the number 14 center or combo guard in the nation. And then Fat Fat Brooks came in, a freshman who got high praise from Dusty May in the, in the uh, Big Ten Media Days as well. 6'2", 190 pounds. Number 13, point guard nationally. He like he wants to have two point guards, two players that can handle the ball on the court at the same time. And then it sounds like two centers as well. Wow, the versatility, the depth of this team. I think we're going to 
make the NCAA tournament and then maybe win the Big Ten. Yes. Howard Isley Jr. is a freshman, six foot, one ninety five. He's a walk on, another son of a coach here. I'm not sure if I like that, but there's three <laughs> coaches' sons on this team, uh, or, or a former coach's son. So that's three. Wow. But then guard uh, L. J. Kason is another freshman, six two, one hundred and ninety pounds the 38th ranked combo guard, but I'd be willing to bet he can shoot and play defense, just what Dusty May wants. So let's go into the coach and staff, then we'll talk the schedule. Um, we talked Dusty, his record. Dusty has brought in players early that fit the mold, and he has, he is able to play, play them and pay them, <laughs> pay them. I am not. I didn't dive into the NIL for every particular player, but uh, that's why some of these guys came in. Players are coming up later. Uh, in the later on, well, they were supposed to come up early. Anyway, uh, now I'm flustered. Sorry. <laughs> oh, the radio. Ah. Let's talk assistant coaches, shall we? That's where we're at. <laughs> Mike Boynton Jr. is assistant coach. He's a former head coach at Oklahoma State. He went 119 and 109 there, but that's a tough league. The Big 12 perennially, they've been winning all the national titles lately until Connecticut last year. But and he had one tournament appearance as a offensive uh, head coach or defensive head coach. He's a defensive guy. They are always welcome on the staff. Defense is something that, in the years past under Jawan, slipped after Beeline retired or went to the Cleveland Cavaliers, that is. Justin Joyner is another coach that comes in. Uh, coached under Randy Bennett at St. Mary's for seven years. They were 171 and 60 during his tenure there at St. Mary's. Akeem Misk Dean comes in. He was with Dusty May at FAU for three years. He coached for Mike White as well at Georgia before that, Alabama. And then Akeem is known as a player developer, which is also welcome on the staff. And then there's a GM position, also an assistant coach, Kyle Church. Church has been with Dusty for 12 of his 14 seasons. Having someone on the staff who knows you and knows what you want through experience is invaluable. So good on Dusty May for keeping this guy by his side. Director of player development and another uh, assistant coach is Drew Williamson. Williamson was with Dusty for three years at FAU. So there's no lack of familiarity on this coaching staff. They're all familiar. He knew what he wanted to go get in, in the coaching staff, and he knew what he wanted to go get uh, as far as a roster. Special assistant to the head coach is Brandon Gilbert. Again, a guy that has been with May for six years. They must love Dusty May to be so loyal and follow him and and stay with him even after the success that they have had under him. That's incredible. So great hire by Michigan. Great um, procurement of talent by Dusty May. So who are the starters? Who do you think the starters will be? It's gonna be Trey Donaldson, Ruben Jones, Roddy Gale. Will shatter it forward and Vlad at, at center most of the times? Or is it, like I said, you could have two centers, you could have two point guards. Very versatile staff. Now let's look at the schedule. It's a good song. 2024 schedule for Michigan is pretty easy, really. 
Um, then exhibition on the 20th of this month, which is what, next Saturday? Oakland. That's going to be a win, but it don't matter, I believe. Now, uh, the November 4th is their first game, I believe. Cleveland State, they're going to win that. On the 10th of November, at 1 o'clock, we are at Wake Forest. They're not as good of a team as Michigan has. They have been in the past, but their procurement hasn't been up to par. That's a win. TCU at home is a win. Miami of Ohio at home is a win. Tarleton State is a win. So that's 5-0. and all. Then on the 25th of November, we have Virginia Tech at home. This would be this is going to be a big game. I think it's a win. 6-0. and oh. All right. And then on the 27th, either at 6 o'clock or 8.30, we'll take on either South Carolina or Xavier. That's another win. So we'll win that preseason tournament, I believe, seven and all. Then two conference games early, uh, December 3rd at Wisconsin. They're not the team they used to be. And Michigan is now seven and all going into this game. And with the way I expect everyone to be gelling and everyone's gonna be a role player on this team, anyone can score any given night. The way it used to be under B-line, I think Michigan wins at Wisconsin. Not an easy place to play, I know, but I think they win. And then Iowa at home is a win, 9-0. and And then December 10th at 9 o'clock, we have a home game versus Arkansas, who was number 14 in the nation. I think we lose that game. We're riding high, 2-0 in the Big Ten. We, we lose that game. And then 9 o'clock, uh, December 18th versus Oklahoma, we bounce back. We get a win versus a very good Oklahoma team. Purdue, Fort Wayne is a win. Western Kentucky is a win. So we're sitting at 12-1. and one. Going into a road trip to the West Coast where we play at USC and at UCLA. These games are January 4th and January 7th. Hopefully they just vacation out there you know, during this part of the season, during uh, winter break, holiday break. I think they lose the first game at USC, and then they win uh, the second game versus the ranked team. I think probably both these teams will be ranked at this point, but Michigan loses at USC, and then they win at UCLA. 13 and 2 record. Washington comes to Ann Arbor on the 12th of January, and I think we win that game. Then at Minnesota, we win. Northwestern at home, we win. At Purdue, who is number 16, these are ESPN preseason rankings that I'm giving you when I say Purdue is number 16. Um, I think they, you know, they lost a lot. Ed, some of them guards. Number sixteen. Well, I do think we lose that game though. <laughs> On the road at Purdue, tough place to play in Mackey. And then Penn State at home is a win. At Rutgers is a win for Michigan. Oregon at home is a win. At Indiana, number eighteen. Michigan's riding high going into this game. Nineteen and three so far this in the season. I think they make it 20 and three on the road to Indiana. And then Purdue is at home. We'll uh, get a revenge for the road game earlier, win that game, 21 and three. At Ohio State, it's the only matchup all season versus Ohio State. That seems to be a regular thing going on. A lot of the years anyway, we only play them once. I think we win. It's very important. Uh, Roddy Gale Jr. comes over from there. He'll tell us how to beat them on the road. Michigan State's at home. Uh, we play them twice. I think we go one and one versus them. And I think we win this one at home. 23 and three at Nebraska, 25 and 24 and three. Rutgers is at home, 25 and three. Illinois is at home. Only time we play them this season. It's at home. 
if this team is gelling like I think it is gonna, they're gonna win 26 and three, and that probably automatically clinches a Big Ten uh, regular season championship. But we still have Maryland at home, which is gonna be a win, and then at Michigan State is the last game of the season for Michigan in the regular season. I think they will lose that game. Mainly because they don't need it, and I think it's going to be Tom Izzo's last regular season Big Ten win in his career. And, you know, it can't last forever. I don't think their season is going to be that great, but going out on top, beating Michigan, you know, that would be something to be said for his Hall of Fame storied career to end it. So that's how it goes right there. What do you guys think? I think Michigan goes 27 and 4. That's a big step up from only 8 wins last year, but Dusty May has done a masterful job in year one overhauling this whole entire team. Let's see how they gel. He said that there's been some nagging injuries keeping some people out. Once the nucleus is formed, I think this team is going to be very scary. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like the video. Share with others out there. Subscribe. All that good jazz. And have a great night. And go blue. Let's go.